Okay, thank you, Marco. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Tamás Csonka. I work as a weather forecaster at the Hungarian Meteorological Service. And uh, first of all, the most important and uh, maybe the hardest question is, where are you listening and watching, maybe enjoying this briefing? Please put your answers onto the map. Okay, use the pencil or any other marker. And uh, of course, if you wish, you can also make a comment or remark on the actual weather. And we are looking for the most exciting weather at this moment. In uh, Budapest, uh, right now, is very exciting for building up vitamin D. So weather is sunny and some cirrus clouds can be seen from the our off, from our off window, and uh, it's uh, 16 Celsius degree, about 16. Okay. Any any other? Thank you. Thank you very much. Or a clear okay. So let's start. On our first slide, you can see our water vapor images 6.2 uh, from 60 uh, from 6 UTC this morning. From this morning, and the uh, other question is coming. Please mark uh, the area of the jet stream where could be jet stream in this uh, picture. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for a few seconds. OK. Thanks. And uh, before check it, we, where can the trough and ridge be located? located? Please draw lines where you think the trough and ridge area is. So trough and uh, ridge, maybe, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's use some seconds to think about it. Okay. So now we show you the same satellite and uh, overlaid with the ECMWF uh, 500 hectopascal wind and uh, geopotential fields. And the uh, and, uh, answer for the jet stream uh, you can see northern part of. Uh, Europe, darker areas and uh, dry areas uh, just south of Iceland. And the high level and wide uh, cirrus shield is also a good predictor of the strong winds in upper levels. And uh, you can see the jet is turning right. Uh, we try to draw, turning right uh, approximately the Baltic states, over the Baltic states. And uh, there was a question about uh, trough. Here you can see the trough elongated over Eastern Europe, west part of Russia towards the Black Sea, to the Eastern Mediterranean. It's a really elongated trough. And the uh, end of this trough, a cut of low is de developing in this area, causing active weather in Southeast Europe. Okay, and the, the ridge was extended from the Atlantic to the center of the continent. Uh, sorry for that. This is the ridge. Okay, and the next satellite image, uh, Hermes RGB from zero UTC. And the next question would be uh, please guess where the fronts and the frontal zones are in this picture. Please draw lines where you think they are. So, okay, the question again is where could the front, frontal zones be found? What do you think? Mm -hmm. 
we are waiting. It's a good, it's a good answers. Okay, a few seconds. Oh, it's uh, Greece and Turkey and the upper part of the picture. A few seconds, wait. A moment. Okay, any guess? Okay, uh, here is the uh, solution. At the second layer, we put the pseudo equivalent temperature at 850 hectopascal. The lines are more dense along the northwestern jet. We, can, uh, we saw the previous image. A very long waving frontal zone is situated over the northwestern part of the Euro-Atlantic uh, region. So we try to draw. And the uh, mild air mass is uh, advecting from the southwest to the northeast. Ahead of this stream, we can see uh, also a warm front, maybe is moving towards Russia, western part of Russia. And the other interesting area is uh, close to Greece, a uh, cyclone is deepening, and we can see the warm cold and uh, maybe an occlusion front on the right lower corner of the picture here. So, uh, move on and we'll check the analysis uh, chart of three uh, national meteorological services. Uh, it's maybe a technical problem. We try to solve it. Uh, excuse me and uh, sorry for that. Uh, we overlaid three uh, numerical um, National Meteorological Service charts. So the first, I hope uh, it can be seen, the UK Met Office chart, then the uh, Deutsche Wetterdienst DWD charts, and the last but not least, <laughs> or Hungarian Meteorological Service. A few fronts can be seen on the German uh, Met Office chart and on the Hungarian, then in the English one. English one is the first. Sorry for that. So this is the UK Met Office chart. Long wave uh, frontal zone and the uh, cyclone, uh, Greece and Turkey. So, uh, okay, we try to stop sharing and uh, back to the presentation, okay. And the last satellite images with question would be a natural RGB picture. You can hear. How do you think where are the stratus, fog, and uh, say bay clouds in this picture? So stratus, fog, and say bay clouds. Uh, please mark this uh, in this picture. Okay, maybe the stratus and fog. Okay, okay, it's a good stratus and fog, and uh, maybe Tsebe cloud. Aha, Tsebe cloud. One, one guess for Tsebe. Okay, anybody? So uh, let's check. You're probably uh, familiar with the SAF non-casting product where the cloud types are seen. The frontal cloudiness is uh, much, much thicker and also near the cyclone uh, northern part and the uh, and, uh, southeast. With orange color, the very low clouds can be seen over Germany and Poland. It was a Good tips and guess. And uh, for instance, stratus and fog, of course. The British eyes, near to the British eyes. And, uh, and okay. Let's move to the next image. Uh, 
which is uh, infrared, then a 10.8 channel. So uh, the high is dom uh, high uh, dominates over much part of Europe. Its center is close to uh, France and the uh, Alps region, and low systems are located around the high northern part and. Uh, And we can observe uh, thick clouds with very, co uh, very cold tops in the northern part associated with the active cyclone. And the another low causing a significant, I mentioned significant weather, is uh, swirling over the eastern Mediterranean. And uh, okay, as we move to higher levels, let's check first. Uh, 850 uh, hectopascal field, the temperature field ahead of the frontal zone, the northwestern part, mild, uh, mild air is streaming over the northwestern half of the continent, while Arctic outbreak is uh, present over the southeast of Europe, and the cold air mass is flowing from the northeast to Turkey and to Greece. So it's a very active outbreak. Eastern part and uh, um, 500 hectopascal, the northwestern Euro part of Europe's strong westerly flow is present. We saw this uh, jet. The aforementioned active frontal zone is situated in this uh, region. We try to draw it, and it's okay. And the aforementioned ridge is located here. British Isles and Northern France and to the Poland. And a very long wave, elongated trough is extended from the northeast through, through the Black Sea down to the Mediterranean Sea. And the two cut of flow can be examined on the, to the west, the southwestern part. And uh, this is a well developed over the Atlantic, and the other under the one recently forming, developing. Um, we can focus a little bit more on this second one. So, this is a quick uh, overview. Help us to bring uh, our attention to the southeast part of the continent, mainly for thunderstorm and wind gust. Orange warning was issued this morning or this early morning over by the Hellenic, Hellenic Met Office. And uh, civil weather uh, EU also mentioned this area, uh, daily outlook uh, for enhanced risk for severe storm and severe winds. And uh, please look at Scandinavia a bit. Uh, we will talk about it later on. And just uh, back to Greece. And one of the reasons is that in the low levels, uh, very moist air is advecting ahead the cold front. And the precipitable water is up to 25 millimeter, and the uh, active uh, uh, cyclone is present in this area, and the vorticity advection together with the cold advection in upper levels increase the instability in that region. Even though the Cape values you can see does not seem very impressive, but uh, the good combination of the ingredients such as an overlap of favorable helicity and shear and uh, marginal instability should allow uh, organized slow moving storms, thunderstorms to develop. So these parameters also enhance the chance uh, for severe thunderstorm also with locally torrential rain and uh, severe wind gust also and the uh, possibility of uh, marginally large hail or how huge amount of small hail uh, or globe. So uh, let's move on the next slide. High amount of rain can be seen in the accumulated precipitation field from the ECM WF model. So uh, locally up to uh, 80 millimeter of rain is parametricide 
uh, in this model. This is a really active region. And the next slide you can see the also ECMW forecast field for precipitation combined with clouds, uh, cloud forecast. You can also notice the high values rain in the shorter period of time, of course. As you might remember over Scandinavia, there was uh, uh, also issued a yellow warning for wind. The wind at uh, 925 hectopascal shows uh, 25 meter per sec values. It's a really, really strong wind in this region and it's uh, well correlated with the upper level winds, a strong jet stream is uh, situated in this region as it's seen in the 300 hectopascal wind fields. And this uh, pattern of the wind field or jet stream was quite frequent this month while a uh, aforementioned huge ridge or anticyclone is dominating over most of the continent. We try to uh, draw it. And high winds in the northern parts, quite long trough or cut off low uh, rules over the east and the south, southern part of uh, Europe. And uh, as for me, I would like to thank you, your attention. And the second part will be held by my colleague, Marian Dorani, and I will pass the ball, Marian. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can all hear me uh, well. So my name is Marian. Uh, I also work as a uh, weather forecaster here in Hungary, and Tomasz is my new boss, <laughs> and I'm very proud of him. So uh, let's continue with this uh, jet. Uh, this is uh, an example from last week, uh, the same 300 hectopascal wind field uh, from the 23rd uh, of March. Uh, the ridge is in the center. Uh, while jets uh, are surrounding it up in the north, in the east, and also down in the south part of the continent. Uh, if we uh, move on, uh, this uh, is another example from uh, the recent um, period. Um, this is a very uh, typical situation when a cutoff flow was uh, swirling over uh, Tunis and Algier, and this flow caused a wide range of extreme uh, weather events in that area. Uh, we can show you some uh, measured uh, weather charts. Uh, on the left hand side, it's the 24-hour um, precipitation, and on the right hand side, you can see the wind gusts uh, from weatheronline.de. You can observe uh, the high values appeared in the north of Africa. Also noticeable that in the northern countries also experience severe uh, weather, but uh, mainly for stormy winds. Uh, now we try to share our uh, desktop again for a minute, because uh, about this um, cyclone, uh, we have a video. Uh, you can see, hopefully, you can see infrared images and the forming and uh, the development of the thunderstorm are used to follow. The lines of thunderstorms generated cold cloud tops, which are relatively cold, uh, quite cold regarding uh, the season. The cloud tops are below minus 50 degrees can be seen in yellowish and orange color spots close to the center of uh, this law. One explanation for uh, high precipitation volumes can be that many uh, convective cells, one after another, went across the same area. Uh, now we stop sharing our screen and go back to the presentation. So on the next uh, slide, um, 
you can see that although for most of us as weather forecasters and shifts in the center of the continent, many times the weather was not too exciting. Green warning map, CTC, uh, in such boring weather, making a good forecast had its own challenges. Uh, what I mean is uh, that the most difficult task was to forecast the minimum temperature. It is crucial in this period, I mean in the beginning of the growing season, because the vegetation and also the agriculture is very sensitive for frost. And another key factor, the lack of precipitation caused by the dominating anticyclone made things worse for the agriculture. Also, uh, the quite rapid moving fronts with strong gusts instead of considerable amount of rain enhanced the drought. On this photo, uh, which uh, was taken by one of our colleagues, uh, you can see the Hungarian version of the storm, uh, which was near the surface and uh, caused, uh, it was caused by the very dry soil conditions and strong winds at the same time. Um, it also can be a problem for aviation because uh, the observation tools, for example, the visibility sensors uh, can be easily misled by the high amount of dust particles in such cases. Another hardship for forecasters, as we mentioned, is to predict the minimum temperature. This is very tricky uh, when the models overestimate the minimum. You can see here an example for that. Yesterday, last morning, uh, the observed lowest temperature in the upper left corner, uh, negative values in bluish colors. The values uh, are between plus 3 or 4 and minus 9 uh, Celsius degree. On the other hand, uh, at the right uh, bottom corner, the ECMWF model forecast is seen and it shows that it's very badly overestimated the temperature. Uh, but the models, the other models, uh, were neither more successful in that situation. Um, in the left bottom picture, you can see the differences between the observed minimum and the model forecast temperature. The most significant errors can be found in the center part of Hungary. The slight difference in the orography can cause huge difference in the temperature field. In such situations such as very weak flow, no clouds and no fog, uh, the minimum temperature is uh, determined by mostly orography and urban heat islands. For instance, hills and near lake area areas are milder or warmer. On the other hand, valleys and slightly lower places in the and then its surroundings are cooler or much colder. So if we move on, uh, you can see uh, some soundings. Uh, the upper left is from uh, Budapest and the bottom for Szeged. Uh, the very low relative humidity and very, very strong inversion close to the ground uh, present in both, both uh, stations, uh, which are very favorable for frost. And since and these soundings are from zero UTC, until early morning, the inversion tends to strengthen. So to sum up these things, uh, fruit trees and blossoms are very sensitive. So we have to be very cautious with the forecast of the minimum temperature when these uh, parameters are present, such as high pressure uh, dominates the synoptic scale, relative humidity is very low, no winds and no cloud or no fog uh, should be uh, these circumstances. Uh, but from the user side, Side, it's uh, also very important uh, when they use our forecast. Uh, it is very crucial for preparing for frost protection during the night hours. Here on this photo, uh, and the, this protection can be seen in action. In action. Heaters uh, produce smoke, which covers the vegetation as a blanket during the night hours or early morning hours. So uh, we can take a look at the soil moisture water content uh, diagram uh, during the last month. Uh, during our last weather briefing, uh, what we had in October, uh, the level of the Danube uh, River was extremely low. It was a severe drought. This is the reddish part of this diagram. 
After that, uh, a relatively wet winter followed. In the Alps, more than three meters snow was fallen. And the picture is not from Hungary, of course, it's from the Alps. And uh, this more humid period is also seen in the Hungarian soil moisture measuring measurings. And uh, this current drier period uh, started uh, at the end of this winter. It is well seen in the diagram also. Moderate to severe drought can be seen on the map. And the most affected area is in the eastern half of Hungary. So finally, uh, we mm, take a look at the next couple of days. This is a plum diagram for uh, Budapest. And you can see there's a change in pattern. Uh, finally, the ridge is moving uh, to the east, northeast. It can also be seen on the decreasing heights of the 500 hectopascal uh, geopotential. And the deep trough uh, should uh, determine the weather of Central Europe, which will bring the possibility of some measurable, so deeply desired rain. So, uh, with this uh, happy slide, uh, we conclude our presentation. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please ask. We try to do our best to answer it.